to my channel. Today I'm here to talk about The Handmaid's Tale, the actual book, the novel. And this came out in 1984 or 85. I can't remember. It's either 84 or 85 and it's by Margaret Atwood. A lot of you guys are probably familiar with this book from the Michelle. series. Yeah, yeah, the series on Hulu, which we started watching after I read this. Um, and for those of you who don't know, it's a dystopian society. Uh, so it's fiction, fictional based with elements of reality where you can see society really turning into this. Um, and it's a novel about women getting their rights stripped away. Like I, in simplistic terms, that's basically what it is. It's kind of like a religious, sect or re religious structure that takes over the government, forms these terrorist attacks, so to speak, where they literally wipe out Congress, the White House and all this stuff, and slowly but surely the rights of women are being taken away to the point where women who are seen as like low value or immoral are subjected to being handmaids, where they basically are assigned families and they have to engage in the act of a ceremony where they become surrogates, but they're not really, it's not a, a choice. The book is really good and it differs and it's very similar to the series in many, many ways, but I thought it would be cool since you've seen some of the series and I've read the book and now have seen some of the series to talk about it and to see, you know, what would make somebody want to read this and should they read this, so. Yeah. And especially someone who might have watched the series, like what's the point of reading the book? Or, I guess a little bit too. But, yeah, um, that is actually a good point. <laughs> um, okay, so so in the, um, the show, the pace seems kind of slow to me. Um, is that kind of how the book goes? Like, does it describe things happening kind of a lot? Or is like, there seems to be a lot of introspection in the show. Um, where you know you assume what the person's thinking in the moment based on her expressions or the context of the wow, scene. Wow, that is a great observation. I only say this for someone who hasn't read the book. That's a really good observation because what I found when I read the book, it's interesting. I read the book before I watched the series. So, but I did watch one or two episodes before I read the book. Maybe just one. Yeah, I think I watched one episode before I read the book and I remember watching it and being like, none of this makes sense. What is going on? I wanted answers. Like, I didn't understand. And then when you read the book, it's all narrated. It's narrated from a, a point of June who is the handmaid, but she's not really telling, she is telling the story, but you can tell it's a third person. It's a hard way to describe it, but either way, you know her thoughts you get more of an explanation or background immediately. Like it sets the scene and it sets the tone. So there's guesswork more so as to what's gonna happen next, but there's not guesswork as to how she feels. So the book gives you more insight, whereas in the show, they can't literally say, June is like you, she's looking confused or she feels low or whatever. In the book, it explicitly kind of says it, um, where it's, easier to understand what happened and how rights were taken away. The show, when it starts, you don't even know if rights were taken away. It's kind of like, wait, who decided this and how did people go along with this? Like, you know, it's very confusing, whereas not so much in the book. Okay. Um, the outfits. So one thing I haven't gotten from the, uh, the show or this is the outfits. So I see the outfits in this on the, on the cover and it's also kind of you know, you see it often in the um, the show. Is that a prominent piece of the the book? Does it have significant meaning? Um, because you know, when you think about that, you see the outfits. Um, people have done protests, like in real life, and worn those outfits and stuff like that. Um, so. Yeah. So yes and no. I think it's a subtle significance. It's the same in the show. It's a subtle significance where it identifies you and it marks you as something, it's almost like the scarlet letter in the sense of you're able to visibly see. One, if you're a woman, period, they already know you're of a lower standard or class in this um, society. But depending on the color of the clothing that you wear and the style, it also is a class rank. So like the wives in the book, they wear more like a blue, I think, or whereas in the series is more like a greenish blue, 
tealy color in the um book the commander's wives i should say and then well, the, we'll, the, we'll leave the color no the colors it doesn't matter like oh, okay. that's not a big deal of it it's just saying like the social rankings is clear they explicitly state it like the handmaids they wear red um the econo wives or whatever econ wives basically like low ranking status people who are married they wear like this gray or brown i forget something the marthas wear like every woman it's clear to tell what position in society you hold by the clothing that you wear you know conclusions or something's going on now that may lead to something worse in the future when we're talking about like kind of some assumptions in the fire next time or our interpretation of the, the you know the phrase from the fire next time um, and so the person on the back or Newsweek describes at what takes many trends which exist today and stretches them to their logical and chilling conclusions so you know is this more of a warning? Is this um, more of entertainment? Is this trying to get people to change? Um, what, is it persuasive, I guess? Um, or is it just... Um... So I would say with, them, it's, again, I'm, I've am i read a, a lot of dystopian-like books um, and I really like that style of writing like night to me this is up there with 1984 1984 to me is like the precedent of it um you know i think brave new world was before I, brave new world was good fahrenheit 451 all these animal farm all these are kind of like they take this real life situation and like you said it's almost like a warning because they're taking real life scenarios and show you what the conclusion could be i feel like that's just a trend in dystopians and kind of like the basis of it is it a warning in some ways probably because the way june describes it's like okay when when they killed congress and they said these were terrorist whoa, acts whoa, whoa. it's immediate like wow. that's literally the the when they did all these random things and they said they were terrorist attacks and stuff like this you know we were we were fine when they started doing little things to take away rights you know you're fine with it you're you're thinking this is going to blow over you're not taking it serious basically because your everyday life is still functional taking away little rights is basically taking away all rights because that's what it leads to and i think that's the warning is don't let people take away your rights like as soon as things are threatening the rights of society stop it before it gets to here so yes, it is warning, but a lot of it is entertainment in the sense of it is exacerbated past what we know to be true currently. How did, how did this become popular? Um, well, never mind. No, that's a good question. How did it become popular? It depends on who you ask because this book was not on my radar, which I think is interesting because 1980s is when this book came out and even in high school, the reason why I got into dystopians was because of high school in English. You know, you're you're forced to read books. Well, you're not really not a lot of people were forced to read dystopians, but you're forced to read like Scarlet Letter. I think that's a common one. Right. And you're forced to read like um, maybe or maybe not. You read um, Fahrenheit 451 or maybe you read 1984. Maybe you read one of these type of dystopian books. Maybe you didn't. But this wasn't a book that was talked about in literature in school for me and i felt feel while reading this this should have been to me just because i feel like they could have skipped scarlet letter in some of the dystopians this is that and this combined in one was scarlet letter written by a man wow crap i don't know what i mean by that would be a good point i don't know but scarlet letter definitely has those situations where I remember in English class just talking about like how women were you know subject to basically it's basically a witch hunt which is what this is this is a moral are you moral or not witch hunt it's the same situation and they're basically putting you in different class systems but that's a good point because women writers crap what book was written by a woman Pride and Prejudice that was a book that we read no I didn't have to read that for English but a lot of people did have to read it um that's a book from women writers but you're right who knows what's Maybe. it about pride and prejudice <laughs> it's about well that's a different that's a, that's such a i just want to know what it's about really you don't know what it's about it's about pride and prejudice and love it's about 
in love there's so much pride and there's prejudice our love story is pride and prejudice in a way she realizes everything that she saw about him was a misconception it was a prejudice well, what, I'm, what i'm getting at is that a, a man would like a story like that where a woman who doesn't like him eventually ends up liking him therefore it will be more oh dang he just tried to he ruined one of my favorite <laughs> you didn't ruin it but i still like it but i think it's a good story because it's like it's what we do like i feel like a lot of times people misconceive who i am as a person you know people just are quick to judge and things always seem different from different perspectives you know i don't know anyways right. tangent I can't believe I can't freaking remember who wrote the damn book. Nathaniel Hawthorne. Shit, you're right, it was a guy! <laughs> oh! Oh, I get so mad. I'm mad that I didn't think of that at the time. I did think of that, I think. Now that you say it, I think I did. But of course, hindsight's always clear. You're so freaking right, that's so freaking annoying. Oh, I wanna throw up at all of our freaking Growing up school systems. Ugh! Throw it away. Go to the library. Learn on your own. Go to the library. So freaking annoying. Anyways. Back to the video. I'm hot thinking about that. But I to guess me, that's the same. Thing, they don't oh, make you Another thing that's interesting books, about books the... Uh, black writers. Yeah, that's true. Um, I mean, in my high school, they kind of did because we did a lot of poetry. And you guys were black. Yeah. Yeah. So back to this, another, one thing I noticed from the show was that the women seem to be the meanest ones. <laughs> what? In, in the episodes that I've watched. Oh my god, no! Outside of the raping. <laughs> <laughs> what? Are you crazy? Oh my god, okay. I guess Serena Joy or whatever the the commander's wife is way. I guess they portray the woman as a villain, but it's like hurt people hurt people. No, no, She's, no, no, no. I'm not, so, I'm, no, you're seeing her as an evil person because no, and the aunties. The aunties, I don't. I see them all as victims almost. Like yeah, they're bad people in the sense of that, but it's literally a man's world. The biggest freaking people who structured this whole thing and weeded the I people out. Okay, let's not Artists. use that because no. I haven't seen the show. No, enough. but not even that. I get what you're saying. To a sense in the book, uh, to your point, I, a sense they, in the book, it is Uncle a, a Tom's. They're not really Uncle Tom's. It's almost like... Well, it's better than I might as well do this because I have no. to, instead of being a handmaid, otherwise I'm going to die. But uh, to your point, in the book, she does address that she talks about the whole chasm of the she talks about the whole chasm of her hating the commander but also appreciating some of the night it's almost like with slavery like the way your master he was your master but he would do these little mind games to maybe give you an extra cookie or something and you like oh that was sweet when he did that so one thing i'm thinking about about the meanness of the character that i've seen in the i've seen scattered episodes but the importance of childbirth to existence um seems to be a big deal mm -hmm. what's um, that movie where there was the last pregnant woman anyways mm -hmm. you remember um, that movie no oh. so like even like it's not even just a surrogate you, they're going through the process with them like imitating all the stuff <laughs> sitting there being like and then the anger and the resentment and the the desire to to have the surrogate get pregnant is like is that as big a deal in the book and is that trying to show something about the importance of childbirth to womanhood or to religion in general or something like that i think well there's that's a good because the whole I, thing is based on childbirth but that's like only one part of life it's but not it's, based it, on childbirth it. i think it's the same as in society with the right to have abortions and random stuff we all make it like the whole thing is based on taking care of children but then you don't take care of children who are actually alive the only children you care about are fetuses you know what i mean like I don't know. It depends on what side of the fence you are or how you view this, but I feel like it's a scapegoat used to control. One of the things is in the book, granted in the book as well as in the series, birth rate is at an all-time low. 
these alternates or whatever alternate rights um <laughs> these <laughs> these super religious people or whatever where they have their own ideas of religion have come to the conclusion that because society is so immoral that that's why children aren't being born but if that's really why they thought children weren't being born they wouldn't round up all these immoral women and make them give birth to these kids like you get what i'm saying like the cons like it's 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 just to control women it's con to control it's control it's all about power to me I could be simplifying this, but that's my interpretation. Um, and it's not centered around, yes, it's you're like you're using a very serious issue and you're using that and exploiting that to inflict all this power stuff. Because even with Serena Joy, her character built helped built the society, more so in the show than in the book. But she had no idea that women rights were going to be taken away as a result to this she thought she was going to be one of the front runners with the men doing this so yeah yeah so what would make someone want to read this if they seen this show did i ask this for this yeah I yeah this for this. You, you told me already no i didn't tell you oh because that's a question that is a good something i couldn't answer until watching the show some people ask me this on on Instagram. I post the book that I'm reading that week weekly, like because I read about maybe like one or well, sometimes more than one book a week um, and I'll post it. And if I like the book, I'll post it. Sometimes I read books. I don't like it. I don't post it. Anyways, I post this book and I hadn't watched the series at that time. And people were asking me, you know, should they read the book because they already watched the series? And I was like, I don't know. I have to watch the series to see that. This is a tough one. Um, I would say if you have not seen the series, you definitely need to read this book. You def I think you should read the book. If you've watched the series and you don't care for reading, I'm going to go against the grain. I don't think you need to read this book. I've actually Googled this to see if you should. And people were like, regardless, one or the other, you should still read the book. Honestly, if you've watched the series, and if you've gotten far enough, they eventually start explaining things. So this gives you maybe a little bit more insight of things I'm carrying with me, but not enough to tell somebody they need to go back and read this book. It is an amazing book and I think it should be required in schools, you know, but if you read the show, I don't think you have to. So for me, I would say 3.5 star chance that I would, out of five, that's a weird, star rating is kind of weird for likelihood, but um, chance that I would um, read it just based on um, a woman author talking about what I think to be um, a women's issue controlled or determined by men. Um, so yeah, that's why I would be interested to see what I come out of it with and how that might um, what I might think based on that. Yes, I say if you like reading, that's the other thing, that's why it's hard to answer that because I know some people honestly don't really enjoy reading. Like, and that's fine. Like some people, when I say reading, they may not enjoy reading novels. Maybe their attention span and the way they visualize things don't come to life in the same way a series does. So that's why I was saying like, if you're not going to read yeah. the book, at least watch the series and also because the series so if there wasn't a series it probably would be yeah if, if there wasn't a series absolutely read this book you know but because there is a series if you want to escape code that then go ahead but if you like reading child you don't like this book like it's a easy read it's not thick well i don't think it's thick it's like maybe two three hundred pages anyways i think that was a good review babe i enjoyed doing this with you, you did a good job <laughs> Well, thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you've read the book and if you've watched a series, make this a dialogue. I would love to hear your perspectives of this and let me know if you plan on reading the book. Anyways, love and light and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.